Today, we are discussing an important topic for anyone working with microservices, managing inter-service communication. We will explore widely used architectural patterns that facilitate this communication with some real world examples. We will also discuss when to use each pattern. Hi there, welcome to Tech and Career Bites. I'm a software professional with over two decades of experience, including seven years in leadership roles at a global product based organization. Consider an e-commerce application with several thousand independent microservices like order processing, product catalog, shopping cart, and payment processing. Each of these services needs to talk to each other to give the customer a smooth shopping experience. In microservices architecture, each service operates within a bounded context. A bounded context is a specific domain with its own data and rules. For example, order processing is a bounded context, while the product catalog is another. Please remember this as we will refer to the bounded context later in this video. Efficient interaction between the microservices is crucial. Why? Because it impacts performance, reliability, user experience, and even security. An efficient microservices architecture helps handle lots of transactions smoothly, adapt to changes, and stay ready for future growth. So how do we manage these interactions? There are two main patterns choreography and orchestration. Let's start with the choreography. Choreography is a decentralized approach where each service acts independently, reacting to events from other services. There is no central authority here. Each service knows what to do based on the events it receives. Choreography follows an event-driven model. You can learn more about event-driven architecture and the protocols are used in it in a separate video. The link can be found in the description box. Take Netflix for instance. When a new user registers, the user management service triggers an event like user created. Other services, recommendations, billing and email notifications listen for this event and take action independently. The recommendation service creates a personalized suggestions, billing sets up a payment info, and the email service sends a welcome email. No central coordinator is needed in choreography. Choreography has its pros and cons. Let's quickly go over them. We can then focus on our next architectural pattern. Choreography promotes decentralized communication and decision making among services. It allows for easier scalability and evolution of individual services. Reduces dependencies between services, enhancing system resilience. Choreography fits well with event-driven architectures, supporting real-time processing and responsiveness. With choreography, it is harder to visualize and manage overall flow across multiple services. Due to its asynchronous nature, ensuring consistency across the services can be challenging in choreography. It is difficult to trace and debug issues that span multiple services. Choreography requires a good understanding of event-driven patterns and asynchronous communication. Now, let's talk about orchestration. Orchestration is a centralized approach where a central orchestrator manages all interactions. It tells each service what to do and when to do it, much like a conductor leading an orchestra. Amazon uses orchestration for order fulfillment. When we place an order, an orchestrator, like an order management service, coordinates everything. It checks inventory, processes payments, arranges shipping, and updates the order status. The orchestrator makes sure all these steps happen in the right order and handles any issues that come up. Orchestration offers centralized control, simplicity, and transactional integrity. However, 
it can lead to tight coupling and potential scalability issues. Central orchestrator might become a single point of failure. So how do you choose between choreography and orchestration? Which pattern to use and when? Here are some tips. Use choreography for loosely coupled interactions and flexibility. Opt for orchestration when you need centralized control and strong consistency. Think about your system's requirements. Consider scalability, fault tolerance and the need for real-time responsiveness when selecting between choreography and orchestration. If these factors are paramount, choose choreography. Otherwise, opt for orchestration. Sometimes a hybrid approach works best. Orchestration within a bounded context and choreography between bounded contexts. Remember our discussion about bounded context? If not, don't worry. You can always go back and revisit. Deciding between choreography and orchestration depends on the application's needs. Considering the required level of control and flexibility as well as potential growth of the application is essential. Balancing these factors will help in selecting the right approach for the microservices architecture. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting tech topics. Do check out our other videos on software performance optimization case studies, system design, coding, big data and career growth. My name is Rupa and I thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.